Today is the day Yeti Cycles releases a bike back into their lineup that has been a glaring omission for a few years now, and we are very excited to see it back. Can you guess what it is? You are absolutely correct, ladies and gentlemen, the 2024 all new Yeti ASR. Hey man, what's up? Ready to ride? Uh, yeah, I'm ready, but uh, spandex? Yeah man, Yeti ASR, Super XC. Yeah, I'm on it too, but uh, I'm gonna wear baggies. Um, all right, I'll wear baggies. Yeah, good call. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard that right. The Yeti ASR is back fully modernized and updated for 2024. The ASR has been in and out of Yeti's lineup for gosh, about the past 20 years now, if not more. So it is really awesome to see this bike come full circle, fully modernized, and with pretty much everything you would expect from a modern cross-country race bike. Without giving away too much of the details, this thing is an absolute purebred cross-country race bike, but with some fun surprises. Let's get into all the details. The Yeti ASR has 115 millimeters of rear travel, paired with a 120 millimeter fork, brings you a 66.5 degree head tube angle. That 115 millimeters of rear travel is actuated with a single pivot suspension design, reminiscent of ASRs of years past. The ASR also has a 75.5 degree seat tube angle and is offered in sizes extra small to extra large. This bike does not have tube and tube cable routing and even the ultimate build has a carbon fiber frame that is unique to the build, which does not have drive side cable ports. This bike has other features that you would expect on a Yeti compared with the other new Yetis that have recently been released, like a threaded bottom bracket, configurable cable routing ports, and a UDH derailleur hanger compatible with SRAM transmission. This bike is offered in three different levels of carbon fiber frames, starting with the C-Series build, the Turk Series build, and the Ultimate frames. This bike is also offered with the brand new SID Ultimate Flight Attendant, which will electronically lock and unlock the suspension for you, depending on your terrain. This bike is compatible with chain rings from 30 teeth to 36 teeth, has two mainframe water bottle mounts, and an integrated rear mud fender. This bike is also offered with DT Swiss XRC 1200 carbon wheels that feature a 180 hub. These are brand new wheels from DT Swiss with a 30 millimeter internal width and they come in at around 1300 grams, which pair perfectly with the bike. The frame weight for the Turk series carbon frame is an estimated 1940 grams, and the frame weight for the ultimate frame is an estimated 1768 grams. This bike also has internal routing for the suspension lockouts, which are actuated with a RockShox twist lock handlebar mounted lockout. For all the builds, specs, and other nitty gritty details, please hit the link in the blog in the description below. Enough about the nitty gritty details, let's get down to business and talk about how this thing actually rides, which is really what it's all about. I was lucky enough to spend a few days on this bike prior to launch, which was absolutely amazing. I had a ton of fun on this bike. Initially, I rode this bike as it was specced with the 740 millimeter Next SL race face handlebar and the 55 mil I believe it's a bike yoke stem. And um, I had a pretty good time on that setup, although I noticed that it wasn't quite as playful and trail bikey as I personally prefer. All, you know, obviously it's a cross country race bike, it's gonna come with that setup. So obviously it's still super fun, just not my preferred cockpit setup. So I ended up swapping for this cockpit you see on the bike here, which is a 40 millimeter trail one stem and a 20 millimeter riser bar and was 780 millimeters wide. So that really gave me a much more um, comfortable and familiar cockpit position. And um, with that said, I mean, that change in the cockpit changed my ride experience. It has completely changed my life. Completely transforms the bike from a like hardcore cross country pure bed race bike into a little bit more of a down country situation, but a bike that still weighs like, you know, 23 and change and is extremely capable and lightweight. Found myself using the remote lockout quite a bit. It's not something I'm actually used to using all the time, but I found that once you had that locked out, this bike was more eager to eat up the miles and just go fast. I mean, it was more eager to do that than any bike I've ridden in years. And with that said, even when it, the bike is unlocked, that single pivot suspension is just super predictable. It's something that you find on other bikes as well, and especially in this segment. So I think that's, it was a good move for Yeti to move to the single pivot for this bike. I mean, 
It doesn't ride the same, obviously, as a Switcher Infinity equipped bike like the SB120, you know, something similar. But with that said, I had an absolute blast on this bike. Like I said, it is super eager to just go fast and eat up the miles, unlike any other bike I've ridden in years. Quite frankly, if you are after a bike that is just all about speed, and if you love lightweight bikes and self-proclaimed weight weenie, then this is 100% the bike for you. It still has a 66 and a half degree head tube angle, which you know, is, is pretty slack for a bike like this. And I found that that really allowed you to ride the bike however you want. You're not really limited in any sort of geometry factor. You know, you can go hit a jump trail and still have a ton of fun on this bike. Whereas, you know, a lot of other hardcore cross country race bikes, you're just really not gonna have a good time on a trail like that. Gonna have a bad time. I just wanted to ride this bike all day and not stop riding it once I was on it. And that's pretty much exactly what I did. So all in all, this was absolutely amazing bike to ride. I really thought that the component selection suits this bike very appropriately. If it was my bike personally, I would probably beef it up a little bit, you know, some slightly beefier tires and brakes that would really go, um, go a long ways when it comes to riding in more challenging terrain. But if you're looking to get a bike that you could take to the start line of a cross country race tomorrow, this is absolutely one of those bikes. So for what it's worth, I hope that helps you with your bike making decision. If you are looking for a bike that's, you know, on the little more fun end of the spectrum than the business end of the spectrum, I consider, you know, a bike like the Yeti SB120 or something along those lines. Um, it's gonna be a little more eager to party. I like to party. This bike was more like that guy, or you know, it's more like going to a party when you don't know anybody and you gotta have a couple beers to have a little more of a good time. This bike, once I kinda got more familiar with it, it like had a couple beers and it was ready to party. Um, so I hope that helps you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend or somebody who else might think that this bike is pretty sweet. I guess we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for tuning in. Cheerio.